The inspiration for Agony in Stony Places begins with a plate from Dante's Inferno, illustrated by Gustave Dore. Who could fail to be compelled by that remarkable image, the two grappling demons, Calcibrina and Alkin, rending and clawing at each other as they tumble towards the blackened pitch? To tell the story of what truly inspired the painting, though, we have to go all the way back to 1311 and Dante himself, who, having been expelled from his native Florence by the time he wrote his magnum opus, was battle-worn from the conflict with the Ghibellines in Campaldino, betrayed and exiled following his rift with the papacy, and heartsick following the death of his unrequited beloved Beatrice. It's also a story that became informed by the unravelling events of this past summer, one that mirrored the symbolic divisions between the white and black Guelphs of Dante's era, but fixed as a light and darkness battle that ultimately became a racial one. It took me back to a time when I first picked up the volume, a time when the social and racial upheaval rocked my own hometown of Liverpool during the Toxteth riots of the early 1980s. It's why I chose to place the winged hellions in the native streets of my youth, clawing between the cliff face of derelict tenements, the tarmac swallowing them up like the boys from the black stuff as they eviscerate and throttle one another, forming a noose from the bloody entrails. Looking for all the world like rancid sausage links forming a thread between the past and the present, while the resurrected Dante stares on through the pyre of a burning police car. For the artist, I think he represents a spiritual guide, mapping the levels on that incandescent search for the understanding of life and the demons that haunt us all. What Dante shows us then, uh, through his life and through his work, that in such times that we are living, it can be art's greatest purpose. <laughs>